Hey there, Nango Stu here. Today's video is on adjusting the ignition timing on an outboard motor and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. Before we get going though, I've just got to say it kind of made my day seeing all the funny comments you guys left on the clock video. I know it was a bit tongue in cheek, but uh, it was great to see a lot of people took it in the spirit it was intended, you know, well, not 100%, but you know, most. The original video I did on setting the ignition timing on that Tahatsu motor, it covered a lot of the theory of ignition timing, so I'm not going to go through that again. If you're interested in understanding what ignition timing is about, then I recommend checking that video out because it goes through the theory for you. What was different about that video is the specifications for the timing were all done on lengths of linkages. So it was very much just getting the spanners, measuring things, getting to the right spec. In this case, we're going to be using a timing light, which is another very common way of setting the timing. The great thing about a timing light is that it shows you exactly what is actually happening. If, for example, in that situation with a Tatsu, I'd set all the linkages correctly and it wasn't running well, it may be that that Woodruff key that holds the flywheel onto the crankshaft had broken and sheared. I've got another video on that as well. If that shears, it doesn't matter what you do with your linkages, if that flywheel's rotated on the crankshaft, your timing's going to be out. So that's another thing you can check. In this case though, I'm going to throw the timing light on. We'll see what it is at idle. You need to be on the water really to be running at full throttle under load to see what your total or your advanced timing is when you're running at speed. But we'll just get the idle timing right and hopefully get rid of that backfire. So I'll show you quickly here the specification for this motor so you can see what we're aiming for adjusting it to. Here at the top, we've got the ignition timing. So we've got a fully retarded timing, which is essentially your idle timing, which is seven degrees after top dead center, plus or minus one degree. And that we're looking at, at full throttle, at full advanced, having 25 degrees before top dead center, plus or minus one degree. There are basically three leads that come off a timing light like this. Positive and negative, they need to go to a battery to power it up. The other lead is this one that clamps around the HT lead for cylinder number one. It's a little induction coil that has a current induced in it when the spark plug fires. Cylinder number one is always the top cylinder on all outboards. You'll also notice on here, there's a little arrow saying towards the plug. So when it goes on the lead, it needs to go on. So that arrow is pointing towards the spark plug, not back towards the ignition coil. In this case, with the arrow pointing this way, it just means it has to go on this way. So the arrow is pointing towards this plug, not go on that way. So the arrow is pointing back towards the coil. Because this is a pull start motor, it doesn't have a battery in it. So I'm just gonna hook it up to a separate battery. So just negative to negative, positive to positive, as always. Now what I'll do is we'll just turn the water on, fire the motor up, and have a look what the idle timing set to now. Hopefully you can see then, it was sitting at a few degrees before top dead centre. So the timing's actually a little bit too advanced, it's firing too early. The way a timing light works is that every time a little bit of current gets induced in this coil, when spark plug number one fires, it flashes a light on. And that gives you a kind of a strobe effect. So what you're seeing, instead of this blurred spinning flywheel, you're just seeing a little fraction of a second snapshot of the flywheel just when the spark's firing. So your brain sort of sees a still image instead of a rotating image, of that point in time. And then that part of the flywheel that's passing, that needle will tell you exactly at what point in the cycle the spark's firing. So in this case, it's firing a few degrees before the piston reaches the very top of its travel. What we now need to do is wind that back so that the timing is more retarded. It, it happens later. So we actually want the spark to happen seven degrees after top dead center. What I'll do now is show you how we adjust it. I won't be able to hold the timing light, the camera, and adjust all at the same time. So I'll show you how it is adjusted, then I'll just set the camera back on the stand and I'll slowly adjust it until it gets to seven degrees after. Down here, there's a little stopper screw. And what that does is it pushes against the bottom of this lever. The more we push down the bottom of the lever, the more the top of the lever pushes to the right because that bolt is pushing it to the left, and then vice versa. What we need to do now is wind that bolt outwards so that the lever is able to move to the left and have the stator plate underneath the flywheel rotate clockwise 
which is the same direction as the flywheel's turning, and that will retard the timing. The way the ignition system works is there's a stator underneath the flywheel, and that stator can rotate around the crankshaft. As the flywheel spins, a magnet in the flywheel passes a coil on the stator, which induces a current in the coil, and that then triggers the CDI in it to find a spark plugs. Now, if the flywheel's turning clockwise, and then you rotate the stator clockwise, it'll fire later in the cycle because it's got further to catch up to it. If you rotate that stator anti-clockwise and the flywheel's going clockwise, you're sort of heading into the motion of it and it'll fire earlier in the cycle. So we now need to move it clockwise, so we're going to make the spark fire later. So instead of firing a couple of degrees before top dead center, we want it to fire seven degrees after top dead center. So I'll fire it up again and then I'll put the timing light on it and adjust that screw until we get seven degrees. What you'll also notice is as I adjust the timing, as you advance the timing, the idle speed will increase, and as you retard the timing, the idle speed will decrease. So once you've got your timing correct to the spec, you may need to adjust your idle to get that into range as well. As I back the screw off, it got to about top dead center, and then it stopped moving, and I'll show you why that is. What happens is, as this lever tries to go this way, the top can come this way because I've backed that bolt off, but the lever here actually hits against the plunger for this dash pot that stops it going any further. The dash pot's mounted onto a bracket and the bracket has these slots in it. So if I loosen these two 10mm fasteners, I can move this bracket further to the left, which will allow this lever to come further into the retarded position. So I'll back these off and move this across a little bit. All right, fire it up again, see where we're at now. As you could hopefully see then, it does depend a bit on the frame rate of the camera, so I'm hoping it shows up on film all right. But we were sitting at about four or five degrees after top dead center. Means we've got another couple of degrees to go. So what I'm gonna do now is lengthen that linkage from the top of the lever to the stator. I'll show you that. This linkage here connects this lever to the stator. So if I lengthen this linkage, I'm going to push the stator further clockwise and further retard it. So I'm going to take this off, wind it out, maybe three threads or something, put it back on, fire it up, put the light, see where we're at. I may need to adjust this a few times to get it right. I'm just gonna pop it off from this end. Then I'm gonna wind it out. One, two, so three turns. Then it's got this little locking nut at the back. I won't worry too much about tightening that up until we're done. So pop it back up, put the light on again. As you can see then, it was around about the bit over six degrees after top dead center. So within that seven plus or minus one degree range, still backfiring and popping a bit. So I've got a feeling it's probably more a lean condition causing that. But at least we know now that our ignition timing for the idle timing is correct. I'm going to wrap this video up here because I want to try and keep these videos a little bit more sort of themed rather than being these long rambling investigations. So I think in this case we'll consider it a video on how to use a timing light and how to check your idle timing on the outboard. So hopefully it sort of gives you an idea how that works. They're pretty simple. Three leads, point at the flywheel, find the marker, you're good to go. There's a few finer points. That needle that the marker's on is adjustable, so it needs to be calibrated so that the outboard truly is at top dead center, the piston's at top dead center, you know, in the position that that needle's at. Um, most outboards I've found are pretty much just set up right from the factory, so it's not something to really worry about, but if someone has played with it, then be aware of it. Now we know the timing's right, I'm gonna look into other reasons why that outboard might be sort of popping and sneezing and backfiring a bit like that. Classic reason is that it's running lean, so we'll be looking at all the reasons for that. So we can look for things like a vacuum leak, just the carbs being dirty, uh, mixture screws, reed valves, all those kinds of things. So we'll do that in a separate video next. All right, well, thanks as always for watching. We'll pick this one up next week and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. All right, see ya.